What would you do if you are an employee of a company where you are overworked, but one day by chance you meet a divine fox spirit who promises to take care of you and help you in everything you need? Thus, starting your new life with a demigoddess. Well, that's what the helpful fox Senko San's all about. Chapter 1. Thanaim begins by introducing us to our protagonist, Kurvata Mekamano, a 30-year-old man who has a disastrous life. At work, they overploy him. He usually sleeps in the office to be able to finish all his assignments until he eats poorly and his age does not help him having constant back pain. From an astral plane, what appears to be a fox goddess observes the darkness that Nakano harbors inside. So to avoid bringing the world to ruin, she sends one of her assistants to pamper him and release all that evil that he keeps in his heart. Returning to the real world, the protagonist arrives at his house after a long day at work, but finds a surprise. There's a fox girl in his apartment. At first, he doesn't understand what's happening. So to avoid problems, he tries to get her out of the place. But since she's a deity, she goes through walls without much effort, plus she uses a couple of cute little faces to convince him to eat the dinner that she lovingly prepared for him. As they share a nice meal together, we finally meet Senko, an 800-year-old servant of the gods, making her a demigod fox. She makes it clear to him that she is there to take care of him, since she owes a debt to his family, promising that she will take care of him until she fulfills her promise. Then Nakano asks her to let him touch her fluffy tail, which at first surprises the demigod. But since she told him that he could wish for whatever he wants, now she has no other option but to accept. Nakano caresses Senko's tail with great care and joy, and we realize that little by little the darkness that he had is disappearing. He tells her that he wants to give her something in return, since thanks to her he spent one of the best nights of his life, to which she replies that seeing his smile is more than enough. The pampering of a demigod does not have a specific price, you simply have to enjoy them. Senko offers her legs for him to lie down for a moment, congratulating him for all the hard work he did today. Nakano falls asleep for a while, remembering that apparently he had already run into the fox when he was little. When he wakes up, he feels like a new man, to which she replies that this is only the beginning of his new life, full of pampering. The next day, he wakes up thinking that everything from yesterday was a simple hallucination, but this doesn't last long because as soon as he gets up, he sees Senko and he remembers what happened the night before. She tells him that he shouldn't go to work since he is too tired to be able to do something without falling asleep. Nakano tells her that even if he doesn't want to go, he must fulfill his obligations. Senko is left alone in the apartment, so she decides to do the household chores so that when Nakano returns from work, he will feel comfortable at home. She does his laundry, makes his bed, and cooks dinner for him. After another stressful day at his job, Nakano comes home drained of energy after working so hard at the office. Senko has the bath and food ready for him. After a nice meal and a relaxing tub bath, Nakano has an earache because his boss yelled at him very loudly, leaving him with a nasty pain in his ear. She offers to help him, to which Nakano agrees on the condition that she allows him to stroke her fluffy ears. Senko begins to clean his ears, causing Nakano to reach a state of relaxation that he has never known before to the point of falling asleep. In his dreams, he meets the demigod of Fox again in what seems it to be a memory of something he has already experienced. When he wakes up, he asks Senko if they've met before, but she evades the question, saying that she can't remember all the faces she's seen in these 800 years. Conveniently, Nakano tells her to let him touch her ears, but he gets a little curious and ends up sticking his fingers where he shouldn't causing a tremendous scream from our demigoddess. She gets angry at first until she tells him it's time to go to sleep, and Nakano tells her he only sleeps four hours a day. Senko gets even angrier and forces him to sleep like any normal person. After a while, Nakano realizes that Senko sleeps on the floor, so he offers her a fusion so that she can rest more comfortably. However, she misinterprets his intention, and they end up sleeping together on the same bed. Senko notices that Nakano was nervous, so to calm him down, she wraps him on her chest and strokes him with her tail, making him sleep like a baby until the next morning, when he feels completely refreshed to go to work. Days later, they were both playing video games, and Akano is excited because the fox had lost her bet and now she must let him touch her tail. The two make too much noise, drawing the attention of her neighbor, Yasuko Koenji, who is going to scold them for being so rowdy at that hour. She misinterprets the situation and tries to call the police, but Senko convinces her to stay for lunch with them, so she can get to know her a little better. Yasuko can't deny the demigod Fox's tenderness, so they share some stew. She's a mangaka and a student at the same time. She asks them what kind of relationship they have. Nakano doesn't know what to answer, however, Senko makes it clear that she's his wife and mother at the same time. Yasuko, as if nothing accepted that answer, thanking for the food, but not before asking about her ears and her tail. Senko tells her that they are part of her body, and Yasuko interprets as if she is referring to the fact that she is cosplaying Yoko a character from an anime of which she is a huge fan. This lie convinces Yasuko, and after eating, she returns to her apartment. Nakano tells her that they should watch Yoko's anime to at least understand what they are talking about, and thus not reveal Senko's true identity, who, by the way, doesn't know what an anime is. They both end up watching the series, being fascinated with the story, 
but above all with the peculiar resemblance that the character has with our little fox. After that, it's time for dinner. She realizes that she has already run out of all the ingredients she brought, so she will have to buy more food. Now, Kamino think that it would be very strange if Senko goes out like this, since she would stand out a lot. But he comes up with the idea of covering her with a coat and a hat so no one can see her tail or ears. Once in the supermarket, Nakano has a hard time because Senko is quite careless, and on more than one occasion, she almost reveals her powers to the rest of the people. After several scares, they finally go back home. Their Senko tells him that the next time she will go alone, but Nakano tells her that he feels bad for letting her take care of everything, promising that he will accompany her whenever he can. She didn't want to accept his request. However, she ends up telling him that if going shopping together makes him happy, she can do it as many times as he wants. When the MC hears this, he begins to think that it is the first time that he has had fun with this type of thing. Days later, Nakano arrives from work more tired than usual, and to top it off, he has the bad news that he also must go to the office on his day off. A worried Senko tells him that if he continues like this, he won't last long, to which he replies that despite everything, thanks to her, he feels a little more relaxed than usual. Nakano sets his alarm for the next day, but the demigod Fox comes up with the idea of waking him up in a more subtle way, so he will wake up in a good mood. Nakano accepts her proposal and goes to sleep hugging the fluffy tail of Senko. The next morning, the only one who wakes up is Senko, who sees the perfect opportunity to pamper him without putting up any resistance. So after dreamily convincing him not to get up, she again offers him her tail and lies down with him, falling asleep until the afternoon. After a long sleep, Nakano wakes up scared to see the clock and Senko reminds him of what happened during the morning, telling him that he should act like a baby more often, so it would be easier for her to pamper him. He feels worried that tomorrow he will have to make up for what he did not do today at work. The demigod Fox tells him that now she does promise to wake him up properly, starting a little argument that she wins with a couple of cute faces, and after a few hours they end up having dinner together. Senko explains about the fox fire, which she uses to light the stove or to see at night when she gets up to go to the bathroom. Nowadays she doesn't use it as much as she did 800 years ago since most things are automated by machines or technology. Days later, the rainy season has started, but Nakano still has to go to work. Senko takes advantage of being left alone to learn how to use the machines that Nakano has in his apartment. But everything gets out of control, the vacuum cleaner scared her because of the noise it made, since she didn't know how to operate the washing machine. She ended up filling everything with foam, and she had problems with the air conditioning control, and finally, by touching the buttons on the television, she turned up the volume too much. Then all the household appliances went haywire, which tripped the circuit breaker, leaving her in the middle of the room in the dark. After that, Nakano arrives, he can't see anything, except Senko's little flames, who is in a corner very scared. He fixes all the machines, to which our little fox apologizes for being useless, but the protagonist encourages her, telling her that it's not a big deal, because for him, the best help she can give him is when he returns home and see her beautiful smile. Meanwhile, from the astral plane, the demigod fox's companions see that instead of pampering him, she is only causing him problems, and his darkness has not yet disappeared. So the demigod Ashiro says that she will go show her how things should be done. The next day, when Nakano comes home from work, he finds two foxes eating at home, and surprisingly, they got along very well. The new demigod fox has a more daring attitude. Once they finish dinner, Shiro comments that she came here because she has unfinished business with Nakano, and she will give him a very special treatment, to the point of letting him pat her head. This fills the protagonist with happiness, but Senko gets jealous in the situation. So she interrupts her work so that they also pamper her a bit, and that's how Nakano felt the pleasure of being with two demigoddesses. Leaving f***ers aside, Shira says that with her powers, she will release the deepest desires of his heart, giving him the option to ask for whatever he wants, as she will grant it without problem. Shira was surprised when Nakano ends up blinded by his desire to touch her white and fluffy tail. The demigod Fox ends up going through the wall, reaching Yasuko's room, who believes that she is hallucinating due to overworks since she sees characters from her favorite anime appear all the time. From a distance, Shira sees how the Nakano is happy to caress Senko's tail and making it clear that she will never coddle him again, because such things bother her a lot. After a couple of days, one night Senko prepared the bathtub for Nakano, who was very tired from the office. She sees that the darkness is surrounding his body again, so to fix it, she comes up with the idea of taking a bath together with him. At first, Nakano didn't want to do it, since she's also a woman, but Senko tells him that she won't do anything strange and will only wash his back. Nakano agrees on the condition that he can clean her afterward. The two enjoy their bath, Nakano feels relaxed with how delicate his demigod is in this type of thing, and when it is his turn, he ruins the situation, because by throwing hot water on Senko, her tail stopped being so fluffy as before. While they play for a while in the bathtub, Senko tells him that she was a little worried seeing him so overwhelmed, reminding him that he can come to her whenever he needs it, since that is her job as a demigod. Senko promises to take him to some secret hot springs which have a very beautiful view of the spiritual plane. Nakano is very happy to hear this, 
But what fills him with joy is to see that Senko's tail is fluffy again, explaining to us that for demigod foxes, their tails are an important part of them, so she takes care of it too much, so it always looks good. Days later, Shiro returns to Nakano's apartment, who is resting after several days of work. Senko asks her to not bother him, however, he gets up and invites her to play video games. Shiro uses Nakano as human backrest, giving him the opportunity to pat her head. After a couple of games, the food is ready, Shiro eats almost all of it, but our protagonist doesn't care because he feels happy to be a company, comparing this moment with spending time with his family. To define who will be able to eat the last piece of meat, they have a video game competition, where Shiro surprisingly wins, but then Senko explains that she cheated since her ability allows her to read minds so she could predict Nakano's movements. After that, Shiro goes back home, but not before mentioning that she accidentally entered the apartment next door where Yasuko lives earlier. The next morning, Senko brings food to her neighbor as an apology for all the inconvenience they have caused her during this time. Senko sees that her room is a complete mess, so she offers to clean it while she enjoys lunch. Yasuko, like an otaku, takes advantage of her opportunity to give her a maid outfit as a thank you for her kindness. Then she takes some photos of Senko, so she will have better references for her manga. When Yasuko is left alone, she unleashes her anger in a scream, making it very clear that she's envious of Nakano for having such a wonderful wife. When night falls, Nakano comes home from work, finding Senko dressed as a maid, which makes him very nervous. She explains to him that it was all Yasuko's doing, because according to her men like that kind of thing. Already in their room, Nakano tells her that he prefers her normal clothes, because they make him feel calm. After hearing that, Senko is overjoyed because she realizes that little by little, she is winning over Nakano's heart. Chapter 7 Time later, while Nakano got up after eating, he felt severe back pain because that day he had to carry some heavy things. At his age, he is not as strong as before. A worried Senko offers him a slightly different massage. Instead of using her hands, she will step on his back to loosen his muscles. However, Nakano refuses because he thinks it would be too weird. The demigoddess massages him with her soft hands, but since she doesn't have that much strength, he shamefully asks her to apply more pressure using her feet. Feeling the perfect weight of her feet, Nakano immediately relaxes and thinks that massages like this should be more common. Senko teased him because while he was lying down, he made some strange sounds, to which Nakano quickly changes the subject, offering her a massage as thanks for her work. Nakano is pretty good at this, but his hands are too big, and he touches certain parts that he shouldn't, and he ends up embarrassing Senko. At the same time, the astral plane, Shiro is observing what these two were doing, but she seemed worried explaining that there are parts of the story that she still doesn't understand, so in a kind of flashback, we see what possibly Nakano's ancestor sharing some food with Senko. Back in the real world, Nakano was leaving for work when he meets Yasuko, who chats with the demigoddess for a while about how little by little he seems to be more animated, but he still has that tired expression on his face. Later that day, Nakano stays at the office for a few extra hours, missing the last train home, having to walk from there to his residence. To his surprise, he meets Shiro, who offers to take him home in an instant, because if he arrives later, Senko will be sad. Nakano accepts, but as a condition, he must make an offering to Shiro the demigoddess. So he buys her some sweets and snacks, managing to generate the portal on the way home. They both travel through a path of clouds, while Shiro finally reveals something from the past to us, and the possible reason why they help him so much. Shiro tells him that Senko was indeed a friend of one of Nakano's ancestors, to whom she owes her life, making it clear that perhaps Senko does not want him for how he is, but rather sees in him the representation of his ancestor. Nakano tells her that this doesn't matter to him because if Senko is happy, he will be too, ending with the fact that the pure smile of her doesn't lie. Shiro was satisfied with that answer, since if he answered something stupid, she would have left him in the middle of a mountain. Nakano finally makes it home and is greeted by a tender hub from Senko, who was worried that he didn't come home from work. He explains to her what happened when he left the office, and although she gets a little jealous, they both end up sharing the dinner that she had promised him in the morning. Time flies, summer vacations are finally here, we thought so because he only has one day off. Shiro shows up to live up the situation, making good on her promise to lead them to a beach where only the gods can enter. Shiro gets to play with Yasuko, who was put to sleep to bring her to the place. Here we find out that these two have a great friendship, since Shiro visited her almost daily to play and watch series together. While these two are playing, Senko asks Nakano if he doesn't want to go have some fun, to which he replies that he doesn't know what to do on a beach, making it clear that this doesn't matter much either, since the simple fact of being there together with her is more than enough to feel happy. Yasuko and Shiro invite them to have a little game of volleyball in the sand. They both accept and end up playing the best they can. The two demigoddesses are pretty good. Nakano is kinda good and, well, Yasuko isn't very athletic. The match was even, 
until Senko feels a pain in her back for not having warmed up before playing, so they end everything in a tie. After a while, Senko proposes to prepare the food, to which the rest take out the tools to make the barbecue. The pair of friends go hunting for clams and fish in the sea, while Nakanov goes looking for something to accompany the food. After walking for a while, he finds an apparently empty store. Suddenly, a woman comes out of the counter. She tells him that it is rare to see people in this place and gives him a gift banquet for him to enjoy with the others, disappearing before he refuses to accept it. Nakano brings the food to Senko and tells her what happened. She takes the opportunity to tease him by saying that perhaps he found his spirit wandering between the two worlds. At that moment, Shiro and Yasuko arrive, but they only bring seaweed. Everyone enjoys the food that Nakano brought accompanied by a beautiful sunset. At nightfall, they light some handheld fireworks that Yasuko brought, but Nakano remembers that he must return to work tomorrow which makes him sad. Senko goes into reflective mode and tells him that all good times always come to an end, however, he doesn't have to worry as he has a demigod fox who will pamper him until he forgets his suffering. She asks him to change his way of seeing things, thinking that tomorrow will be a new day to have fun together, and they make a promise to go to the summer festival to see bigger and more beautiful fireworks. Meanwhile, in the distance we see the same woman from the bar, who also turned out to be a demigoddess fox, but she doesn't intervene, she just watches them from afar and then disappears. Summer vacations are over. One day, Senko was doing household chores when she sees a delicious recipe on television and she wants to prepare it for Nakano. But since that kind of thing is a new subject for her, she asks Yasuko for help. Conveniently, Shiro was also there, so the three of them set out to cook it until it's delicious. After practicing all afternoon, Senko ends up making a pretty good grayton, thanking Yasuko for her help and asking if they could cook together again one day, to which she obviously says that she would be delighted. Night falls and Nakano has returned from work, and Arsenko offers him the food she prepared, leaving him amazed with its taste. He tells her that even though these types of dishes are not her specialty, she did quite well, and Senko said that the real secret ingredient is the taste of her love. Days later, Nakano realizes that he needs a haircut. Senko tells him that she is an expert on the subject, so the MC leaves everything in her hands. She gives him various funny hairstyles first, but in the end, she only lowers the ends of his hair a bit, leaving it almost the same. She tells him that the fun is just beginning, taking him to the bathroom to wash his head. At first, Mikano didn't want to accept, however, he calmed down when he felt the fluffy tail on his face. With so much relaxation, he feels that Senko is not only clearing his head, but also washing away all his troubles and worries. As they leave the bathroom, she tells him that she's happy the cut went well, confessing that it's the first time she's ever done one. Mikano is upset that she lied to him, but it eases as he hears Senko's thanks, which highlights all the fun she's had since they got together. Soon after, it started to snow, but despite this, Nakano still must go to work. The worried demigoddess tells him not to go because there are no trains and he will have to walk to the place. In that moment, the protagonist receives a message from his company where they tell him that the office day is canceled due to bad weather. Senko is excited to see so much snow and asks Nakano to play a little since it's not every day you can experience something like this. They both walk a bit until they find a place to have fun. Nakano tells her how cute she is under the snowflakes, leaving her embarrassed to hear it. She starts a snowball fight, and after entertaining themselves for a while, they both drop to the ground to laugh at how much fun they had this morning. Back at home, the MC felt his hands very cold, so Senko offers to heat water for him to take a bath. However, he indecently asks her to use her fluffy tail, leaving her no choice but to accept the request. Nakano's satisfaction is short-lived as the demigod Fox now has a cold from having cooled her fur, and now she forbids him to touch her tail for a while until the disease passes. Days later, Senko already feels much better. She's even lying inside the kotatsu. Nakano observes her fluffy from afar, but remembers that he does not have permission to caress her. Senko notices this, so she indirectly lifts the band, sharing a cute cuddling moment. After a while, she wanted Mu to go prepare dinner, until an unknown voice interrupted their conversation. Here we meet Sora, she's Senko's boss. Nakano remembers her as the same woman he saw on the beach, but he is interrupted by the demigoddess caressing him with her breath and asking him if he is being pampered in the right way and telling him that she can do things that Senko can't. Story was referring to having sex with Nakano. However, he just wants to bury his face in the middle of her fluffy numerous tails. At first, she is surprised by his request, until a jealous Senko interrupts the conversation, saying that she is the only tail our protagonist needs to be happy. Sora tells her that despite having a tempting body in front of him, he prefers to go for her tails, clarifying that Nakano's tastes are strange and interesting. Before leaving, she whispers to him to be careful, since from his tired face, it is likely that something bad happened to him in the future, ending with the fact that she would not like to see Senko sad. The demigod leaves without saying another word, and as Senko prepares the food, Nakano teases her that he was surprised to see her jealous side. She gets angry upon hearing this, telling him that she was worried that something bad would be done to him, so as a punishment for speaking things that are not true, she feeds him a simple meal. At the same time, in the astral plane, we see Lady Sora talking to Shiro about something. 
hinting that difficult times are coming for Nakano. Spring has arrived, Senko is cleaning the apartment when she finds a box in the closet. This brings back certain memories of the past, showing us in a flashback the time when the fox demigod helped the Nakano to meet his grandmother as a child. But more importantly, she has a feeling that Nakano is going to have a long and hard day at work today. Senko waits for him to return from work today. She prepared a different meal for him that he can accompany with some drinks that she made especially for him. They both enjoy dinner and have a couple of drinks. However, Senko sees that even though Nakano is having a good time, the darkness that he carries in his body does not disappear. She silently worries about his situation, to later find out that he had a terrible day at work, because despite having an important position in the company, his boss continues to treat him like garbage, generating negative thoughts of himself in his head. Nakano realizes that he is already drunk and apologizes to the demigoddess for telling her something so boring, to which Senko immediately replies that he doesn't have to keep that kind of thing to himself, that he can share it, in addition to clarifying that her job as a demigod is to support him in everything he needs. Upon hearing these words, he begins to cry and ends up being comforted by the little fox, but not before falling asleep on her tail. The situation seems to be under control, until we see how darkness once again covers his entire body. At the same time, in the astral plane, Shiro tells Sora how much she misses Senko, who has been gone for a year. But Lady Sora tells her that at some point, Senko will have to leave. After all, everything ends eventually. Back in the real world, Nakano returns home with the good news that he was given a few days off in advance, so he suggests going for a walk so the two of them can watch the cherry blossoms together. However, at dawn, Nakano receives a call from his mother, who informs him that his father is admitted to the hospital, and although the situation does not seem to be serious, he wants to go visit him as soon as possible. Senko tells him that going back to his family can also help him relax, since maybe by seeing familiar faces, he can spend a few days without worries. Nakano has to go out of town, but not before leaving her his cell phone so they can communicate while he's not home. Once there, his mother tells him that his father broke his leg because he was drunk with his friends. That reassures Nakano, since he thought the situation was much more serious. Meanwhile, at the residence, Yasuko returns the bentos to Senko, who was about to leave the house. She says goodbye to Yasuko and leaves, walking through the rainy streets of the neighborhood. Back with Nakano, he goes to visit a temple where he remembers the time he got lost when he was little, and especially that he was helped by a woman with fox features. He realizes that Senko has been by his side since he was a child, so excitedly he tries to contact her. But unfortunately, no one answered his call. Nakano continues to call Senko, but is interrupted by Mitaka, a co-worker who asks for help with office emergencies, forcing him to return to Tokyo the next day. He packs his bags, says goodbye to his mother, and is on his way home. Already at the residence, he finds out that Senko is not there, and that the phone he had given her is abandoned on the table. He starts to worry, so he asks Yasuko if she has seen Senko. She tells him that she saw her leave the house yesterday with some things wrapped in cloth, an umbrella, and a melancholy face. She also tells him that Shiro hasn't visited her lately, but to reassure him, she tells him that they will surely return because in a few days, the last chapter of the anime that the four of them are fans will be released. Meanwhile, in the astral plane, we see that Senko had returned home to give her fellow demigods something to eat. Plus, she wants to talk with Sora about Makano. Lady Sora tells her that she knows what she means, but that it is impossible to remove the darkness from Makano, making it clear that there is no point in her returning to him since it has been a year since she has been pampering him and she has not had good results. For a moment in the real world, we find ourselves with Nakano watching the latest episode of their favorite anime, until some scenes make him remember everything he lived with his demigoddess, forcing him to run through the rain to the temple of the city to beg for one more chance to see her. Back with the demigoddesses, Sora tells her that she understands her intention of wanting to return the kindness that Nakano's ancestor gave her, warning her that if she continues like this, she will only have another sad separation, since they both live in different times. Senko replies that she is aware of her situation, but even knowing this, she wants to try again, explaining that this is more of a selfish desire on her part. Ending the conversation with that, she will continue to pamper him until her heart is satisfied. At nightfall in the Cherry Blossom Park, we see Nakano is sad for having lost someone so important in his life, until out of nowhere, Senko appears walking in front of him. He worriedly asks her why she didn't answer his calls, to which she replies that she only went out for a moment to visit her friends. A little quieter and a wonderful scene in the Cherry Blossom Park, Senko tells him to go celebrate together. They both find a place to sit down to drink and eat the huge feast that Senko has prepared. She puts up a magical barrier so that no one from the outside will interrupt them or notice their presence. In a sentimental moment, Nakano thanks her for helping him when he was little, to which she interrupts him by saying that it's not necessary, since she did that because she wants to be by his side. After a little drinking, the protagonist lies on Senko's legs to see how the cherry blossom fall but remembers that the next day he has to go to work. The little fox tells him that he should avoid getting stressed, and that it's better to live one day at a time. But in the middle of a motivational speech, 
she falls asleep because of how drunk she is. After a while, Yasuko and Shiro appear, they join the feast to finally watch the chapter of their favorite anime together. At the end, Senko points out that this man has been lovely, and Akano tells her that he hopes to spend more time with her. Leaving us with some beautiful scenes of his new life, where from now on, when Nakano returns home, he will always have a demigoddess fox who will be waiting for him.